I'm a solo full-time indie game developer, and that's not an easy thing to be. So if you're a solo dev yourself, and you're kind of despairing over the giant mountain in front of you that is building your own game, don't despair. We all feel that way almost daily. Yeah, definitely daily. But there's also some huge perks to being a solo developer that I've learned over the course of making my first commercial game, Chess Survivors, a bunch of prototypes in between and before, as well as then working on my new commercial game, Hexagod. And the biggest first perk that I want to leave you with is that there's a communication gap in a lot of teams. I've been a software engineer for most of my career, which is at this point about 10 years. And each and every team I've worked on has had to manage communication. And I think my communication style and my ability to communicate hard things is what is one of the big things that was made me successful as an engineer because if a business person comes to you with a complaint from a customer they're giving you their understanding you're interpreting with their message to you you're then implementing it your testers are testing it based off of their understanding of the change and the problem and all those different things all the way then to give it back to the customer to see if it matches their expectation and their fixes and there's going to be gaps in that communication process it's almost inevitable so it's really really hard to get that right when you have so many chains in that tell phone process but as a solo developer it's just you and your own brain and there's there's plenty of challenges to what do you work on in your interpersonal communication and understanding the direction but as a solo developer you don't have to worry about transferring your thoughts in your brain with your context and your understanding into anybody else's brain and that gap even if you go from one to two it's gonna like more than quadruple the amount of effort it goes to communicating direction of ideas not to mention if you're writing code with another developer, you now have to write the code in a way where you both agree to syntax or structure of code. And honestly, as a solo developer, you can write as much spaghetti code as you want because there's no bonus points for writing really good code. The players don't care. The players just want the game to work. So you can write the code which would with whatever way makes sense to you because writing code is kind of personal. Like it's like looking at someone else's code is kind of like looking at their brain and seeing how it functions. And so as a solo developer, you don't really have to worry about about that. And another thing you don't have to worry about and, and a big perk of being a solo studio is funding that studio. Um, this is going to be especially true if you decide to go full time, but think about how much money you'd have to spend if you hired an artist and if you hired a um, a marketer, if you hired a design person, if you hired someone to do uh, more development on the side with you, an artist, all those different things are going to start making the cost of running the studio higher and higher. Hiring a bunch of those people is going to make the game better. It's going to make the game bigger, but it's also going to be adding risk to you as a studio. Not to mention if this is a hobby, it can start draining some of those funds that you have to maybe eventually go full time or maybe go on a big vacation. And once you start selling your game, like my first game, Chess Survivors here, uh, you could keep you could keep all that revenue because you're not splitting it with other people. And so that's a, a pretty big benefit. Like Chess Survivors still sells copies, which helps me fund my studio, which is helping me fund the, the development and working on Hexagod here. And as I start to get Hexagod out the door, which is by far, it's in a demo state, you can go play it right now over on Steam and it's... I think objectively my best game. I, I, I don't know. I don't know how else to say it. Go check it out. But once I get this out the door, it's going to be another game and there'll be a third and fourth and fifth game. And eventually there's going to be all this great passive income out there, which is going to let me start taking bigger swings. And maybe at that point, starting to hire other people, which is a super cool thing that I think is only possible because I'm a lean solo developer. And the final point is that you as the developer, as the solo developer, don't have to answer to anybody. There's very few things in my life where I have complete creative control over it. And honestly, that's one of the things about having a full-time job that kind of irked me a lot is a lot of the time um, leadership would make changes and make suggestions and, and change process things without consulting the boots on the ground people like myself and just make the change without like really giving us reasons for why that change was occurring and kind of just giving you directions and, and giving you timelines that seemed arbitrary and just timelines because we made up a lot of this stuff. We, we, we made the timeline up, so why do we have to stick to it? Can we change it? Can we be flexible? And a lot of the times it's like, no, we're marching to the timeline because that's the timeline we've been given. And there's usually reasons, and it's, it's usually just money and budgets and stuff like that. But as a solo developer, you get to pick all of that. You get to pick what game you're working on. You get to be super agile. You get to say, hey, this week, I'm planning on having a break from that game. I, my main project I love, but I need a break, and I'm going to work on this small little project. Or, oh, uh, I'm going to say the end of September is going to be the time where I want this feature to be done. And then all of a sudden, you get sick mid-month, and you're like, oh, wait a second. I can change the deadline. I'm going to pick something else. And all of that freedom can also then lead to problems of having to project manage yourself and blowing through 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 timeline uh, blowing through deadlines and seeing them fly by and you can wave as they go through. All those different things are big issues and those are big challenges of being a developer, but I think it's also a huge perk to be able to be 
your own manager, to be the person who decides what you take the game in. And all of these different perks allow you to run super quick. You can take risks. You can you can put ridiculous things in your game. You don't have to go through 10 meetings to add something into a game. Grinding Gear Games, who makes Path of Exile, talks about that all the time. And they just talked about that with Path of Exile 2, where they make and they take a lot of risks. They do things that maybe they have to walk back at some point, but they don't sit there and talk about them. They make the decision and they run really quickly. And so as a solo developer, you get to do that. You don't have to sit down and think about something for a very long time. You can put in the game and see, does this work? Is this fun? Eh, no. All right, let's, let's revert it back and let's roll back to a previous uh, branch. I don't do branch management, but if you do, you could easily roll back your changes to a previous branch and then keep moving forward in your project. So I hope some of that helps you out if you're a solo developer and you're feeling that overwhelming feeling that we all feel of like, oh my gosh, there's so much to get done. Remember, there's also a lot of huge benefits to being a solo developer. And I think if you stick with it long enough, you too will be releasing your game sooner than you know it. Please go check out Hexagod. The demo is super fun. This is the best game I've ever made. I'd love to hear your feedback down in the comments or over in my Discord. I've been Aramis. Until next time, have a wonderful day. You got this. Bye-bye.